The Wall Street Journal reported that over the weekend, dozens of CEOs gathered on a Zoom call to plan a new push on voting legislation, coordinating what big businesses should do next about a wave of new voting laws across the country that critics say impose new requirements on access to the ballot box. Georgia has been, of course, at the center of the debate after the state legislature and the state's Republican Governor Brian Kemp passed its new voting law, SB 202, last month. That prompted this scene in the Georgia state capitol as Democratic state Representative Park Cannon repeatedly knocked on Governor Kemp's office door as he signed the new law in a closed door ceremony. Cannon was then forcibly removed from the State House and arrested by state troopers. We are joined now by Representative Cannon and her attorney, Gerald Griggs. Thank you both for being here. Now, we've all seen those images of you trying to enter that closed door signing. Uh, what prompted you to take that action? And, and were you surprised that it led to your arrest, given you repeatedly told the state troopers that you were a legislator and, and should have the right to be there. Thank you for having us. And as you said, I'm a legislator. This is my job. I serve as the caucus secretary and am normally present for bill signings. This was like any other day at the state capitol where we're debating important measures and our voices deserve to be heard. And you had faced charges for obstructing law enforcement and disrupting a general assembly session, but Fulton County ZA said that they will not bring the case. Are you satisfied that your name has been cleared or will you take further action over your arrest? Thank you for that option. You know, we're looking at all of the options we have. At this moment, I am expressly thankful to the Fulton County District Attorney's Office. They did a complete and thorough investigation, which is why our name has been cleared. In this moment, we know there are so many ways that voting rights are being suppressed. So we're just glad in a little bit have an exhale moment as we continue to fight against voter suppression. And uh, Gerald Griggs like to bring you in on this. As a legislator, did she have the right to be there? And, and what are your thoughts now as far as pursuing legal action going forward? Yes, yeah, she had an absolute right to be there. Uh, under the Georgia Constitution, she would be free from arrest uh, during the legislative session. And again, all options, all legal options are on the table. Uh, we are satisfied that the district attorney dismissed the charges, but she should have never been arrested in the first place. And we will fight uh, with every single legal uh, available um, weapon uh, to clear her name uh, now that we have gotten the charges dismissed. And turning to the voting legislation, opponents of the law, including President Biden, have compared the new law to the Jim Crow era. Governor Kemp has responded to that on Fox News, saying, quote, well, I can truthfully look in the camera and ask my African-American friends and other African-Americans in Georgia to simply find out what's in the bill versus the blank statement of this is Jim Crow or this is voter suppression or this is racist because it's not. Would you say that this is hyperbole at all to compare this law, which actually increases the number of early voting days during primaries and general election races to the draconian measures used during the Jim Crow era? Is this law and its impact being misconstrued at all by its opponents? This is Jim Crow 2.0, and we're right on the front lines of it. When you take away the hours that individuals can vote, the locations, the methods, and then you also add criminal penalties for helping other individuals receive human rights issues like water and food, it's very clear that this legislation targets the five million black and brown Georgians, which is why I knocked on that door, which is why we'll keep knocking. Senate Bill 202 is dangerous for Georgia businesses, and that's why you've seen them come out to try to address this at this time. And another point of contention is new requirements for voter identification for absentee ballots. But Republicans say 97% of eligible voters have valid ID and simply have to put down their license or ID number with the ballot and that other forms of ID can be submitted for those who don't have ID. Is that less subjective than trying to match signatures? It's really important that we understand in a state like Georgia, where there are so many languages spoken, we are an international state. Therefore, there are communities who do not access their ballots in English. They access them in other languages. Who pays for that? Those are the counties. This bill, Senate Bill 202, takes away the right of county boards of elections to determine what they need in their communities. This is not a great sign for Georgia 
Georgia, and this is not about exact match. This is about stopping communities from accessing the vote in a way that feels okay to them and in a way that does not obstruct their right. Voting rights are so important for issues just like the one our nation is watching right now, officer-involved shootings and police brutality. Our family and our hearts go out to those involved with Dante Wright, but what we want the community at large to know is this connects to voting rights. These are the same individuals who take away your voting rights, who then propose legislative measures that don't help address the issues with law enforcement and motorists. Just like here in Georgia, we saw this year a piece of legislation that would have put the burden on communities to understand law enforcement instead of the other way around. Just about 30 seconds left. You have said that you are shaken but resolved as far as continuing the fight in Georgia. But I'm curious how you see this playing out in the rest of the country as more states like Texas move forward on new voting laws. There are so many young elected officials around the country, and we speak regularly as ways to determine how do we impact this issue right now. What I will say to all Georgians is one, we have to keep knocking wherever those doors are, continue that going, and two, learn about Senate Bill 202. It is the law. At this point, we do not have an injunction, and we're going to have to comply, learn the rules, and actually play and beat the game. Thank you for having me. Georgia State Representative Park Cannon and Attorney Gerald Griggs, we thank you both for your time. I appreciate you coming on. Thank you for having us. Hi everyone, George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.